Hey everyone, welcome back to Toast to TCG. So recently I upgraded my Phantom Knight deck to incorporate the Adventure Engine, and it went really well tonight. I went 5-0 and while testing for upcoming in-person regional events, and I just want to show you guys the deck profile that I played tonight and talk about some matchups, things like that. So to start off, I'm going to be going from going over the engines instead of going by monster spell trap. I think that's just a better format of presenting a deck profile. Uh, let me know your opinions on that. So to start off is the Phantom Knight engine. There's three torn scales, very obvious choice. Card is amazing. It's an extender and a starter. Its effects are just really good. Very good card. Double Ancient Cloak. In other profiles, you may have seen me play three Ancient Cloaks, but I finally moved over to playing two. Most of the time, you really only need the two Ancient Cloaks. You can get it back with Levier. Um, the third one, while it's okay to play three, I don't feel like it's necessary. Then three Silent Boots, really good extender that also searches out your uh, Fog Blade or your Shade Brigadine. Uh, this card's really good. Then the one ofs, a Gloves and a Stain Greaves. Uh, stain Greaves is like, it's kind of like a controversial topic for Fan Knight players. Uh, I think it's a really cool card. There's situations where you just like, the Stain Greaves would be super necessary where other Fan Knights just aren't going to be able to help you. Uh, you only need it as a one of though. And then Gloves is really good. It just gets you whatever Phantom Knight card you need in the grave. And then for the traps, three Fog Blade and a Brigadine. Uh, I've never felt like I needed the other Phantom Knight trap cards. Uh, Fog Blade's the best one, so you played at three. And then Brigadine for making whatever rank four that you play. Uh, it can also double into as a normal monster for making the Link Spider, or just having the extra dark monster if you actually need it for that. But most of the time, it's just uh, it's a level four. So once you pop your own break sword, you can bring it back. You can use this as uh, a level four material. Um, but yeah, I don't feel like the other Phantom Knight traps are necessary. Usually, it's like. You'll dump one of your fog blades to set up the break sword, where you, the uh, rusty, where you fetch the break sword to uh, trigger rusty on your opponent's turn, um, and then you'll have the other two fog blades for negating things, uh, and then you also still have their effects in the grave later on. Um, I feel like if you, if for some reason you need to use another phantom knight effect to reanimate another phantom knight. Uh, personally, I just feel like you're doing something wrong. Uh, you should never have to use all three of your Fog Blade banishes, or at least almost never. Um, so yeah, if you're coming to situations very frequently where you need to banish four Phantom Knights to reanimate four Phantom Knight monsters, I personally feel like you're just doing something wrong there. Uh, three Fog Blade and Shade Brigadine, I feel, is the best way to play it. Then moving on to the Adventure Engine, uh, Triple Blue Girl. Um, I was actually about to give up on getting this engine just because of the price of it when I pulled this very recently. It's the Collector Rare. It looks really cool. Um, I think they improved on the Collector Rare foiling. This one looks a bit different than other Collector Rares I've seen. You can see like the, there's like foil etched lines in the foiling, and that looks really cool. Um, back to the main topic, this card's really good. Um, it gets you to the main, like, plays of the deck. Or it gets you, like, to the main plays of the Adventure Engine. And then it's also an extender. So if you open, like, you open your, your Rite of Aramessia with Blue Girl, then you get your full, um, your full Adventure Combo with Rite. And then Blue Girl is also an extender, so this plus any level 3 in your hand can get you into your combo, plus you'll have uh, the Griffin to negate. And then, you already seen it, 3 Rite of Aramessia, this card's really good. It puts a 2k beater on the board that you can, um, that the deck, like, depends upon to use its other cards. And it's also a 2k beater, so that's really neat. 
And then for the one ofs, uh, Griffin Rider, the Negate Guy, Fateful Adventure. This card's really cool. And um, the problem is like seeing it by itself usually isn't going to do a whole lot. But uh, it's definitely like a linchpin in this engine. And then Drago back. This card is like really crazy. Um, so like if you already have your adventure token on the board and you discard this for any kind of cost, you get it back right away. And you can also do things like sending it to the grave for forbidden droplets. And then once again, you get it back right away. Uh, it also has that compulse effect on it. It's just a very powerful card. And just being able to recur it anytime that you put it in the grave, as long as you have that token, it's just really crazy. And then for the other engines, we've got Graf and Seer. Uh, despite the the adventure engine, I still feel like Graf and Seer have a place in this deck. Tour Guide and Kagamucha Knight do not, because the Right of Aramesia says that you can't activate the effect of monsters that weren't special summoned so it just conflicts way too hard and it's not necessary anymore um but these are still really good for cherubini because like you can dump your graph get your seer then link your seer and cherubini into your rusty and get the cherubini back uh these are just really great cards uh, pitching this off of anything while you have Cherubini in play gets you your Seer. Uh, there's a lot of situations where you'll have that graph in your hand. And, like, you can go Cherubini, send something else to, like, find your way into Torn Scales. And then Torn Scales can pitch the graph, getting you something else that you need in your grave, triggering the graph to get your Seer. It's a very powerful interaction. Uh, I still like these two cards a lot. And then the Psychic Engine, three E-Tellies and one Wielder, one Tracker. This is also really good stuff. Uh, all three of these cards, or all five of these cards get you a level three. And then opening any of these, like if you open more than one of these, you're still fine because these aren't once per turns and you only have one of each of these. So like you pretty much never, you never really brick on this engine. It's really good. And then for our fusion monster, uh, I'm still on Dragoon. I feel like Dra just Dragoon, just like, I prefer it, honestly. The negate to protect you from evenly. Uh, Dragoon just has a higher, like, kill power to it. Being able to burn, it's just a very strong card. A lot of people have gone over to uh, Destroyer Phoenix. And I'm not saying Destroyer Phoenix is wrong or bad. I'm just saying, like, I prefer this engine over the... Uh, Destiny engine. I just feel like I just feel like Dragoon is a better card than Destroyer Phoenix, but the Destroyer Phoenix engine I can admit is better than the Red Eyes engine because you don't really want to see any of these cards. Whereas in the Destiny engine, you don't really care if you open your um, your Fusion Destiny because it doesn't it's not nearly as restrictive as Red Eyes Fusion. So like you can still do your combo. And then go Fusion Destiny. Whereas if you see Red Eyes Fusion, you you can do your combo or you can do Red Eyes Fusion. But you can't do them both in a turn if you open the Red Eyes Fusion. So um, while I understand why people have been migrating to the Destiny engine, I still like the Red Eyes Fusion engine just because Dragoon is a really crazy card. Uh, going to the Hand Traps. Uh, two Ogre for the Mirror. Two Ash, because Ash is just Ash. And then two Nibiru. Uh, I've noticed at the recent Vegas Remote YCS, pretty much every deck that top was some kind of combo deck. So I feel like Nibiru is just really good in the main this format, just to cover like all your bases that you're probably going to run into this format. And then for the... One ofs, one called by, one rota, one foolish. Uh, just all really good cards. And then finally, the ulti drip. You now I have to show them off for you guys. Then moving on to the extra deck. 
got for fusion monsters, of course, the one Red Eyes Dark Dragoon. I've already explained this card. Really good, really powerful. For our XZs, first we've got Downard Magician and Zeus. Uh, these, this comes up. It's really important to make sure you're playing Zeus. You're not going to make Zeus every single game, but when you need Zeus, of course, it's important to have the ability to just clear the board. A single Levier, the Sea Dragon. Uh, like I mentioned before, the reason that you play the only two Ancient Cloaks, F3, is you can just get it back with Levier. Uh, you've always been able to just get it back with Levier, but now more than ever, because like you already have just so much extenders in the deck, uh, I just don't really feel like the three Cloak is necessary, and Levier is just generically a solid card. Um... I actually used it today to play around a Dimension Shifter, where I had I had the uh, the blue girl, and I banished her out of my hand under Dimension Shifter, and they ashed it. So I had two extenders to make Levier, and then I used Levier detaching like some useless. Th I think it's the Psychic Tracker I detached because I didn't care if it went to the grave or not. So I detached it. To get the blue girl back and then i swung into something made zeus and then on their turn cleared the board setting up my blue girl for my next turn so that was like a really neat thing that happened uh time thief redoer this card i was talking about previously with the uh shade brigadine this is my uh rank four that i go into i know some people might do different rank fours but uh, i feel like redoer is the best one uh, having that like quick effect remove a face up card, it doesn't target either because um, the way you do it is like you make your break sword under a rusty arrow and then pop the break sword, bring back the two phantom knights that you use to make it, and then use one to make your anaconda, and then you flip over the shade brigadine, overlay it with the other one that you brought back from the break sword for your redoer. And then you can do Anaconda for your Red Eyes Fusion. So, like, once this is made, it'll already have a trap attached to it, which is really, really cool. And then, speaking of Break Sword, um, only one Break Sword. Um, I don't really feel the second one is necessary. Uh, a lot of games, I just don't make the second Break Sword. I have, like, in testing and playing today, it didn't really come up. I think there might have been one game where I was like, having the second break sword would be like decent, but it wasn't like, it wasn't terrible not having that second break sword in that one like niche situation. So I really only feel like I need to play one and that the second one just isn't really necessary. Onto the links, we've got dark the dark charmer um this card's really cool being able to just like steal stuff out of the opponent's grave and it's very easy to make in this deck uh so you can go like two two link or two dark monsters to make this get something or then you can like make your make a link three uh, you can use this to make your rusty or unicorn things like that and then if it gets a if your opponent kills it then it gets a, a search then there's Rusty, very good card. Uh, you only really need one. I don't think I've ever seen people play more than one, even though like it went to three a while back, but no one really plays more than one. Uh, it's, just, it's a really powerful card, but you don't really need any more than one. Uh, Cherubini, Cherubini explains itself. Card is cracked. I feel like it's like the center, like the focal point of the whole deck. It's just how powerful this card is. This card is just, like, incredible. Uh, Link Spider. This card is really good. Uh, I mentioned before you can make it with Shade Brigadine. You can also make it with the Adventure Token if you need to. Um, if they Nibiru you, you can turn the Nibiru Token into Link Spider. And then use any extender so that you have two monsters on the board. And go into your Anaconda. And then speaking of Anaconda, Anaconda, use it for your Red Eyes Fusion. 
And then this is a new addition I made. I cut the second breaksword for Sal Mangray Um I'm playing this card because, you know, you get those hands where it's like you open like Ancient Cloak or Boots or something and you have like no play. Uh, at least you're able to like normal summon that card, link it away into this, and then banish that card to like search something. So it's like, it's pretty like decent for when your hand's not decent. Um, it helps out, like it mildly makes your hand better. Um, but that's really what it's for. It's like pseudo unbrick your hand. Uh, onto the nightmares. One Phoenix, one Unicorn. Uh, this one's also collector rare. Um, so let me show you guys like the difference between last year's collector rare and this year. Like the contrast is like crazy. It's like that's like actually insane. Like, even if I take this out of, like, the, the, uh, the sleeve to, like, see the foiling, like, I don't know, I, I just think that the new foiling process looks a lot better than the old one. That's just me. Um, I don't know. I think that the old collector rares just look a lot worse. Uh, anyway, Nightmare Unicorn, Nightmare Phoenix, both really good cards. Uh, popping back row or shuffling cards away. Very, very important stuff to have. And then the final extra deck monster is access code. Just being able to make this big boy and end games. Super good card. And then finally for the side deck. First are one ofs. One Nibiru, one Dark Ruler, one Red Reboot. Um, I haven't seen a whole lot of back row decks lately. But Red Reboot, it's always super clutch. Uh, one Dark Ruler No More. I wanted to play two, but I couldn't really find the space for it. And I can't play four Nibrus. So one Dark Ruler is pretty okay. And then the third Nibiru, um, you have two in the main. And then you side the third one in. Then next up is Token Collectors. You got two of these. This card is super good. Uh, I resolved it tonight against Sword Soul, and it flat out ended their turn. They made their token. I dropped this, blew up their token, told them you can't make any more tokens, and they just passed from there. They There's no way to follow up their play without their tokens. Uh, Triple Lancia for the mirror match. You can also play this against Sword Soul, I've learned. Uh, you side it in, and now they can't use their Tenyi engine, and they can't use one of the uh, that one Sword Soul that banishes from Grave to make a token. Um, this card is just good all over the place. Uh, Virtual World as well. That deck has been coming back up with the, uh, Virtual World Punk deck. Um, Dragon Link is pretty decent against. There's a lot of things that this card covers. I feel like this is, like, definitely a three of this format. Um, next up is Double, Drool and Lockbird. Uh, card was a lot better last format, but... It's still a really good card that you should be playing. Um, last format, I think I, I actually main decked three of it last format. But this format is fine as a two of in the side deck. Um, actually, now that I think about it, Adventure uh, kind of makes the deck a little more susceptible to Jewel and Lock. So you can play this it, into the mirror match now. Like previously, it was really just uh, Ancient Cloak and boots that we're doing searching. I mean, like, I guess reinforcements of the army too, but we're not counting that as, like, it's not necessary for combo, whereas, like, Ancient Cloak can get your plays and boots can get your traps. So, like, Drool and Lock didn't really matter. But now with the adventure stuff, like, Blue Girl searches the right and then you go Drool and Lock. Now they can't get the, um, the Griffin Rider. Now their Ancient Cloak is turned off. Their boots is turned off before, like, they can even go into their combo to use those cards. Like, this card's really good in the mirror match and, like, a few other places. But not super necessary. Uh, next up, two-dimensional barrier. This is specifically for Sword Soul. Uh, this card just turns off their plays also. 
Um, I feel like that's where the game is at right now, is, like, you have to, like, gear your side deck towards Sword Soul. The deck is just, like, if you let it go off, it's just such an oppressive deck to play against that I feel you need a lot of cards dedicated towards Sword Soul. But you'll also run into decks where this will just generically be good. Like, if you play against Invoked, you can still flip this for Fusion, things like that. But this is primarily to turn off Sword Soul's turn. And then finally, three evenly matched. Um, while this is a really good card, someone did mention to me that, like, people are already going to side Lancia in against me because it's Phantom Knights. So this card might not be, like, that good. And it could be, like, Twin Twisters, honestly. Uh, Lightning Storm, Duster, and two Lightning Storms, things like that. Uh, evenly Match is still a really good card. It might not be the best fit for Phantom Knights, so you might want to, like, try something besides Evenly Matched, though I still really liked it tonight. It did pretty well. And then finally, our Adventure Token. Cool, like, little Final Fantasy trading card game. This thing looks really neat. Um, but yeah, so tonight my matchups were... I played five rounds... Uh, round one was against Medolce. Uh, I can't remember it too much. I just kind of like stopped what they were doing with like Fog Blades, Dragoon, Redoer, things like that. And they just had no way pushing through. It was a go second Medolce deck. Like they kaijued my Dragoon in game one. And then like, I don't know, I think like they, somehow they negated the Griffin Rider and then did her like Raigeki or something. But then I had, like, double fog blade set, so I stopped, like, whatever they were trying to do. Um, game two was kind of... I just dropped the full combo, and they didn't have all their board-breaking cards. So I think they just lost that game pretty fast. Uh, game... Or round two was against Sword Soul. Um, a lot of the same thing, like... I just made, like, my adventure board with the Phantom Knights, and they they lost pretty much. They couldn't really do anything about, like, my board state. Um, I think they went first both games, too, so I had to play through some stuff. Like, well, like, game two, I Nubaru'd them. They, they put out the material to make the Baron. And then once they put the material on board is when I knee brewed. And they kind of just passed their turn after that. And I killed them on my turn. Round three was against the mirror match. Uh, the mirror match is like, personally, I feel like it's very die roll. Me and my friend, we played like, we played three, three mirror matches in a row before the tournament. And then that's who I played in round three. Um, but yeah, round three is like super die roll. If the player going second doesn't open like an interaction, they're like, they're just guaranteed to lose to the board. Especially like, it's just very strong boards. Like in the case of the Destiny engine, they have Scythe Lock. Whereas with the Dragoon version, you have two Omni Negates, the Redoer, to, like, spin something. Um, and then you also have your fog blade bring it back to the zone that Rusty points to to blow something up. Um, I lost the die roll in that game. And then I think I had, like, droplet or something to stop the, the Phoenix Enforcer. I forget how I turned it off. And then round four was another game against Sword Soul. Uh, I believe they just, they couldn't really deal with Dragoon. They had this, like, the new Sword Soul Synchro that, like, it banishes on summon. But that didn't really matter because I could just chain Dragoon to negate, destroy. And then use Dragoon to blow up their other two monsters and swing a 4,000 attack into them for game. And then in top four, I played against Evil Twin. Uh, I tried to Nibiru them twice, and both times they had a crossout designator for it. Uh, but I stopped 
I stopped the, uh, the Trouble Sunny with Cold Bite to the Grave, so that was, like, really powerful in game one. And then after there, after hitting it with Cold Bite, it'll just pop off. Uh, game two, I, he cross out my Nibiru again, but, uh, so I, I went to my turn after, he went first in game two, I went to my turn, I did some, I tried to play Phantom Knights, but he had Drool Unlock for the Adventures, and then he had Lancia for the Phantom Knights, so I could just, I could really just do the best I could, it was very hard to work with anything there. And then when he tried to kill me, I still had the Nibiru in my hand, so I cleared his board and killed him on my next turn. Um, and then me and the friend that I played the mirror match with, we decided to split top two. Uh, we could have played out the sixth round, but we didn't. So that is how my tournament went tonight. went really good. Uh, I'm going to be playing a lot now that there's in-person events coming up. I'm really looking forward to that. Um, probably going to be going to the alternate reality event in Philly at the end of March. Yeah, March 26th, I believe the tournament is. So I'm going to be going to that most likely to uh, see how we can do at in-person events again. I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, let me know what you guys are looking forward to with uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! coming back to in-person and what you thought of this deck profile. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think. Let me know your opinions about like Dragoon versus Phoenix Enforcer. Um, and with that said, guys, this is Toasty TCG signing out.